What's another year? Well, if you're the government, it's another 12 months holding the levers of power without the fear of a sudden election. But if you're Fianna Fáil, it's another 12 months or more on the opposition benches saddled with responsibility for government decisions without any real power to shape them. That's how at least some within Fianna Fáil view Micheál Martin's decision announced yesterday to continue the confidence and supply arrangement which keeps the government in office with an election now expected early in 2020. Uh, Micheál Martin, thanks for coming in. I know you've been to Brussels and back today already, so we do appreciate it. Um, in your speech yesterday, you were very critical of the government over housing, over health, over Brexit preparations. Why on earth are you giving them a blank cheque to stay in power for another year? Brexit, fundamentally, I think the uncertainty and the enormous threat that Brexit represents to the country uh, and watching the chaos and mayhem in the, in the British Parliament and the British political system, we don't want that here. I, think we, I don't think anyone would, would accept that we could spend the next four months engaged in an election and a lengthy formation of yeah, government process. If you think I, the last election, it took four months to form a government okay, after 2016. Doesn't, doesn't necessarily follow that it would happen well, this time. Well, I think we are it, in a more fragmented position uh, okay, now, David. But the, and, there's a couple of points there. Like, even if there was a change of government or even if there was no government in place, there is no difference between any of the parties on what we want out of Brexit. There would be no change in the Irish government position, no matter who's in power. We just watched there on, on, on the programme. The type, the type of disruption that will happen uh, from Brexit, even from a soft Brexit, in terms of compliance, in terms of the need to expand ports. Oh, sure. And I know, yes, but the focus has to be on Brexit. That's what the people <clears> want. <throat> mm. I, I've met people all day today uh, and yesterday who approve of the decision that we've taken as a party. That is the right thing to do for the country, uh, rather than spending the next five months in a general election sort of scenario, mm. which means people wouldn't be focused on the job, that they have to be fo yeah. focused on in terms of pharmaceuticals, yeah. medicines, uh, in terms of goods and services, or small, small to medium-sized co companies, sure. agri-food, yeah. farming, yeah, we, we, that's we, the key we, issue. We know how yeah. important it is, but it, like yeah. in fairness, during the Second World War we had not one but two general elections, and I don't think anybody would argue that World War II was less of an exit essential threat that Brexit is. Yeah, but uh, whatever generation where our parents were telling us how difficult it was during that okay. period. Well, you, it needed, but it needed a national focus. And yes. there was a national focus at the but, time. But surely the argument is that you're making that you should have some kind of a national government. Like, rather than propping up the government, Fianna Fáil should be part of the government. If well, no, I think we entered into confidence and supply based on issues. So, for example, the budgets became fundamentally different after 2016. There were fairer budgets, more socially progressive. Uh, in terms of increases for pensioners, uh, in terms of the treatment purchase mm. fund, bigger e emphasis on education, reduction mm. of pupil teacher yeah, rates. So the credit it's a for policy. All of those it's a policy. But it, it, it is a new, unprecedented, and unique type of operation. Confidence and supply. We haven't had the likes of this before, mm. and it is difficult for people in political parties. But ultimately, I think, uh, in, in some instances, it has been good and has made progress. In others it hasn't. I mean, I accept that housing there has been chronic under-delivery, chronic under-delivery in health from this government in those areas. Mm. Uh, and, and part of the review was uh, getting into and drilling into those particular issues. And so, um, if, if there wasn't a Brexit threat hanging over us, uh, I think we would be in a, diff a different situation. Yeah. Yeah. OK, well, you mentioned that you've met lots of people, uh, ordinary civilians, who uh, approve of your decision yesterday. And I think you said yesterday that some members of the political, your pol own political party would find it difficult. And we heard this morning from uh, John McGuinness. And I think we can have a listen now to just what he said on the Sean O'Rourke programme on RT Radio this morning. One very strong member of the party said that to me, that this is the cowardice and surrender agreement. Do you agree uh, with that, that view? And that, that I do, yes. I think that it, it is... Uh, I have a very, very strong view on it. I think it was the wrong course to take. You're, I accusing, think you're, you're accusing Micheál Martin, who's in the Dáil now for nearly 30 years, who has served in government. He's the party leader chosen by the membership. You're, you're saying he's a coward and, and he's, he's guilty of surrender. I'm saying that the agreement was described as that by a member of the party. And you it's agree with it? It's something that I agree with because we're showing political cowardice in the face of a government that is not serving its people well. Why don't you just do, why why don't you just Sorry, do what Sean, people we would are call... We are surrendering to that government the right to represent people from the opposition benches. And that is simply wrong. That was fighting words. Uh, yes, but again, I, I listened to the entire interview, actually. And John said he, wanted the, elect he wants the election in May. Hmm. So he, he's, he's, if you like, uh, in my view, the language is over the top and all of that. But the real net point is he's, he's, he's really having a, a big concern about six months. Well, I mean, he's really. talking about May. Yeah. We're saying um, 
out to the budget, which includes a finance bill. Well, you're saying and a early, early in bill. 2020. And already, if you take it, for example, we had already written to the Taoiseach, I'd written to the Taoiseach yeah. saying because of Brexit yeah. that nothing should happen to the end of March. So the point is this. Confidence of supply is not about you know, corridors and surrender and like that. It's about people. It's about trying to get people's operations in hospitals faster, yeah. okay. hence the treatment purchase fund. Yeah, okay. well, it's about can, a capitation we'll grant for we'll schools. That for a second, but just That's what it's leave, about. Yeah. Before we leave yeah. John McGuinness and his language, which you described as over the top, as party leader, can you have in your parliamentary party somebody who calls you a coward? Well, I have. <laughs> no, I mean, he, he's denying he called me a coward. He's quoting some individual who said the agreement is. Yes. But again, I'm not, I'm not the type of person who gets overly um, offended by that kind of language. I prefer, well. to deal, I prefer to deal with the substance of this. Okay. And when I will listen to the entire interview, uh, the, I mean, in my view, what John is suggesting is we should spend the, six, the next six months politicking, engaged in elections, instead of focusing on the biggest threat to the Irish economy and to the Irish people that we have had since wartime, okay, actually, because this is a fundamental change in our relationship with the United Kingdom, mm. in terms of our membership of the European Union. I cannot think of a greater threat to our country than Brexit. And I think it's the correct thing to do, the sensible thing to do, mm. um, to, to give the time to the entire Oireachtas. And by the way, the confidence supply still applies. We still have 45 deputies. No one in Dáil and least of all the government parties, uh, have a, an absolute uh, sort of okay. freedom of action okay. because we're all interdependent on each sure, other we, in we, this we, current time. We, we saw that in the Eighth Amendment. Okay. The Eighth so, Amendment came through a collective view uh, articulated in, in, in an Oireachtas committee because of the nature of confidence in supply and the, and the changed approach to politics well, in this okay. country. Well, that, that, that brings me to the next issue. Did your parliamentary party or even your front bench approve of this decision before you announced it? The, I spoke individually and I said to the party that I, in terms of last Tuesday night mm -hmm. we spoke and I said well, to you them... You tell them you're going to announce... A, that well, I indicated very strongly to them and I said if, you, you have, if any of you have any views, come and talk to me. I said Brexit is a dominant issue. We have to put the country first. You can read between, between the lines. No one was in any doubt. But also prior to that, of course, I spoke to many, many deputies and sounded them out over the last two to three weeks and in terms of this issue, in terms of, of confidence and supply and the election. The majority were clearly of the view uh, that we could not precipitate oh, a general election. Did you talk to John McGuinness for this? Uh, well, John had made his views known publicly okay, so months ago. John has but made his views known since this started in 2016. He was not in favour of yeah, sure. confidence supply. And but, by the way, the John, would have been, John would have been consistently opposed to my strategies before 2016. John would have underestimated the electoral success yeah. we had in 2016. Yeah. But in fairness, I have allowed a greater plurality of views within the party and a great, I'm a more tolerant of uh, contrarian but, but views why, in the party. Why, why, that's why, that's why wouldn't, you, why wouldn't you allow a a discussion of the parliamentary party. We didn't disallow a discussion at all. But you didn't have People one. No, but we did. But you didn't I mean, have one and say, I am going into the doll, I'm going to announce off my own bat without a vote here. Well, sorry, well, yeah, so people have to read between the lines? Yesterday we met with the, the review committee, of course, you know, Michael McGrath, Char Charlie McConnell, Logue um, and, and uh, Derek Kaleri. They were all of a view, even before I offered any view, that this was, that, that this, uh, was the correct approach. No one in the parliamentary party that I know of, want to precipitate an early general election. Uh, John is now saying May. Uh, and if you think through the logistics of what John is saying, is he seriously suggesting that people are going to hang around until May for a general election, if, if you put that forward as a proposition? Yeah. I think we have to be realistic here and have a degree of you know, common sense applied here. Yeah. And Brexit really is the dominant. We know since Brexit happened, it's overshadowed politics yeah. in Britain. It's overshadowed politics here. And the common refrain I hear, David, from people around here, is thanks be to God we have a bit of coherence in the Irish political system and a bit of stability and a bit of focus okay. and, that, and consensus. And that's okay. a good thing in terms of Brexit and yeah. how we approach it. You've been it. critical of the government's preparations for Brexit. Why didn't you, for instance, look for some concrete assurance that preparations would be put in hand before you gave this blank cheque. But we have, and we continue to do that. I mean, it, it's not as if it's a... The blank cheque is, is a wrong phrase and a wrong application to this, uh, because we have power through our votes in, in, in Leinster House through okay, legislation. But you had, so for example, you we had will, a confidence yeah. in supply agreement for three years that certain things no, were no, supposed it, to be it, delivered it, in three years, sorry. and you're saying that they weren't delivered in three years. The confidence supply actually covered the full term of government, actually. Uh, there was a review at the end of three years. Um, but... Uh, in, in terms of the under, supply, under delivery in housing and health, we're saying Brexit has trumped those issues. We cannot, in my view, uh, spend the next six months engaged in electioneering and, and also the lengthy process of formation of government, which is becoming a feature across Europe mm. um, more generally.
Okay, you said in your speech in the Dáil yesterday that um, this arrangement will allow the government to operate throughout 2019 and then we could have an election free of Brexit uncertainty. Do you have any realistic expectation that Brexit uncertainty will be over by the start of 2020? Well, I, I would, at this stage, one can never be fully certain, but I do think that it's going to come to a head before March at a certain level. Either that means an extension of Article 50 or a withdrawal of Article 50, um, which would give some respite. Again, you have a timeline maybe to the summer for that. Uh, that is not known yet. To a large extent, we're in, uh, if you like, uh, in the lap of the gods in terms of how British politics deals with this. I said in the door yesterday, this is fundamentally an issue for British politics and British society, but it's impacting severely on us already. I mean, the, the fall in sterling is a real impact now on many of our exporting firms and has been for the last 12 months. Uh, and so it, it's here and now. But it is governing our politics. It is shaping it to a degree that perhaps we didn't anticipate when we started confidence and supply uh, two and a half years ago. If, by any chance, st uh, certainty around Brexit suddenly does emerge, if, for instance, the withdrawal agreement is signed and everything goes smoothly on March 29th, does your uh, offer of support still stand? If, it does, if look, the uncertainty yeah. is removed... Could the election happen there? Sooner? Once we enter commitments, we, we honour them. Now, obviously, there'll be tough negotiations around uh, the budget. I've mm. also said we, we must agree a legislative programme. So, for example, Frank O'Rourke and Willie Odita mm. published a bill in terms of the housing adaptation bill for people with disabilities to mm. get that done faster for people with disabilities and get their houses adapted. We have James Lawless's bill in terms of uh, online, uh, online political advertising. Sure. And Michael McGrath has yeah. bills in terms of mortgages. So th those are important pieces of legislation yeah. that we would like to see through. Yeah. And we will work, there will be, the teams will be discussing in early January a legislative programme for the next year uh, that, will, that relates to the real life of people okay. out there and get things done. But the year is locked in. So, yeah, we're committed to okay. doing the right thing, subject to obviously negotiations okay. that will be taken. But I think if you look at our record, we've honoured okay. our agreements, our bona fides have been proven, maybe contrary to what people expected at the outset. Neil Martin, thank you for joining us. Miriam. Thank you.